Hi, it's Laura Giles, your host of Modern Animism Radio. It's Valentine's Week, and what's on everybody's mind but love, right? Love is the foundation of spirituality. Love poetry is what my guests and I will be talking about today. So I'm here with Lisa Giles, who's secretary on the board of Pan Society, and Sharika Comfort. So let's pause to give gratitude to the elements and the ancestors. I acknowledge and thank the lovely earth for our home, food, stability, tenacity, beauty, sensuality, and all the tangible things that sustain our human expression and make it all worthwhile. I acknowledge and thank the air for the ability to speak, think, inspire, and innovate. Thank you for the breath that keeps us alive. I acknowledge and thank fire for warmth, life, purification, desire, and the ability to destroy things that need to end. I ask that you ignite our passion for love, connection, and to stand in our own power so that we can both be sovereign and connected. I acknowledge and thank water for making life on this planet possible, for our emotions that act as a guide through life, and the intuition that keeps us on course. I acknowledge and thank the ancestors from the plant, animal, mineral, and human realms for all that you do that is seen and unseen. A big thanks, too, to our listeners for tuning in and giving us your support. If today's broadcast or any of our other work inspires or teaches you anything, you can help us grow by sharing our podcast or donating to the program at buymeacoffee forward slash pan society. We're all volunteers here, and we need your support to keep us going. So we did a podcast on poetry a few weeks back with Lisa, Giles, and Rick West. I was surprised, although I shouldn't have been, um, how well it was received. Um, And I think that people really do get how poetry and spirituality are so linked and how poetry and love set your heart on fire. You know that soul wants to express, and poetry is a doorway to becoming re-enchanted and reaching through all that yucky social conditioning to connect with our own core and each other. When you speak of love poetry, well, that's a pretty direct route to spirit, and whether you're a poet or not, I think we all feel it in our bones when we hear the world world in someone else's words. So, um, Sharika, can we start with you and have you tell us about um, how your interest in poetry began? Definitely. Um, So I started writing young, uh, early. As a matter of fact, when you talk about, like, the release of emotions, that's actually how I started writing poetry. Mm -hmm. Um, I was in anger management, believe it or not, and that was one of the strategies um, in terms of just having to see your emotions and coping with anger because they always say it has a buddy anger has a buddy emotion and so I started writing just as a release of um, like a form of therapy and I just got comfortable with getting my my feelings and expressing myself in that format that's awesome so um how did you go from that though to sharing it oh um I started just attending uh open mics and slam events and really getting acclimated um, because I'd always been into performance art and um, poetry was just another component of that and like fell in love with the spoken word and performance poetry culture and felt like my my writing is has always been written in a way where it could be shared um, just Mm -hmm. based on rhyme scheme and structure and just started sharing that's awesome Cause I'd be scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny so, I've never um, gotten stage fright. Wow. Well, cool. So, 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 share something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, since we are on the subject of love, um, that's a tough one. I usually write in hindsight, so I a lot of my love poems end up being breakup poems. But I mm. think there's one time I, I've actually written while actively in love. And it was a it's a piece called Believe. And so it goes, do you believe in soulmates? Do you believe in divine intervention? What about fate? Do you believe that God truly makes no mistakes? Well, I do. Because I found God through you. And I truly believe that only a divine being could craft and deliver you to me. You are perfect in all of your imperfections. You are the physical manifestation of a blessing, and maybe that's why when we argue, I feel like my faith is being tested. You are everything I never knew I needed. You see, inhaling and exhaling has always come easy, but before you, I never knew there could be purpose and reason behind breathing. You give living my best life a brand new meaning, and and suddenly I find myself dreaming about 
all of the fairy tales I never used to believe in. And all the love songs that used to make me sick are now starting to make sense. Because, you see, I'd rather have bad times with you than good times with someone else. Without you, my life is incomplete, and of course I need you to stay with me because you're all I need. This is the type of love even atheists pray for. This is the type of love we're told our whole lives to wait for. This is the type of love that God sent Jesus to the cross with, baby. This is the type of love that will make believers out of agnostics. I love you because you made me believe in love again. You made me believe in myself, believe in us, believe in trust, believe in love. And I love you. I don't know if you can hear that. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's me snapping. That's a yeah. <laughs> my snap. My snap is kind of weak. My my snap game is kind of weak. <laughs> yeah, I think I think people who are not in love need to hear that. Or like, if you're in like comfortable love, you know what I mean need to hear that to remember what that's like. That's what I am saying. That I, I love, Sharika, how you said that most of your poetry is like breakup poetry, because I can certainly understand that. That's kind of like when you're, you're, you're most motivated and, you know, and, and that something about anger or sadness kind of provokes some creativity for a release. But happy, yeah. mm-hmm. happy, happy is happy is a little different, you know. Happy, right. you know, it's happy. You know, you know, when you're happy, you don't necessarily want. Oh, I'm going to write something. I'm going to, cre- you know, create right. something. You kind <laughs> yeah. it, 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 I think it's more internalized. It's like you feel it and you're experiencing it, and, and it, and that is kind of how it manifests. But so I love that you said this is a in love poem versus a breakup poem. I, right. I think and that's so appropriate. And it's definitely also how, like, I was conditioned to write is, like, write your emotions and your expressions. And so when you say, like, happy, you want to live in that moment and be present in it. So it's a lot harder to convey that because um, you're so busy. For me, I'm so busy experiencing it. Um, and so it does come a little more easy to write a breakup poem than a love poem. Yeah. I, I love the, uh, this is, I, I don't remember it it's word for word, but this is the kind of love that atheists even pray for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I and think that, that when, it, when it touches you that deeply, you can't help but see the divine in it, whatever that right. means that's, to you. That's right. So, yeah, the invoking of the religion, I think that's, yeah, I, I totally agree. Religion, you know, atheist, agnostic, whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because you mentioned, mm-hmm. you mentioned all of that. You mentioned all of yeah, that. Yeah, kind of love that it, it is. Is out of <laughs> Yeah, it is definitely a spiritual experience. It's like this is other, this is otherworldly. This is, you know, this, you know, where does this come from? You know, where does this right. emotion come from? Well, I think Laura, all three, though. Said, so, go ahead. I was just going to say, I like what you said about. Um, people who are in comfortable love or not in love need to hear that kind of thing. Because totally. uh-huh. you need to, to remember. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's also that comfortable love, you know. You, this kind of like, ooh, because that is going to make you think, ooh, well, remember when we met and how it was when we first started off? That's a spark right there. Mm-hmm. People, if, mm-hmm. Sharika, if you perform that live, couples go home and make love. <laughs> <laughs> After they hear that, after they hear that, they'll be like, oh, you remember? Remember, we need to get that spark back. <laughs> well, and I think, too, that that the the circle between love, the divine, and poetry, you could start anywhere with that. So if you start with the poetry piece, then you'll find the love and the divine. Or if you start with the divine, you'll find the love and the poetry. So, you know, it's kind of a, a self-feeding uh, circle. Yes. Definitely. Well, that was a great start. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I have one, and you guys have probably heard this one, but I think it covers, like, the whole gamut. It's kind of long, but um, if if people haven't heard this, they need to hear this, and that's why I chose it. So it's On Love by Khalil Gibran. Then said Almitra, speak 
to us of love. And he raised his head and looked upon the people, and there fell a stillness upon them. And with a great voice he said, When love beckons to you, follow him. Though his ways are hard and steep, and when his wings enfold you, yield to him. Though the sword hidden among his pinions may wound you, and when he speaks to you, believe in him. Though his voice may shatter your dreams as the north wind lays waste the garden. For even as love crowns you, so shall he crucify you. Even as he is for your growth, so is he for your pruning. Even as he ascends to your height and caresses your tenderest branches that quiver in the sun, so shall he descend to your roots and shake them in their clinging to the earth. Like sheaves of corn, he gathers you unto himself. He thrushes you to make your says you're naked, make you naked. <laughs> he sifts you to free you from your husks. He grinds you to whiteness. He kneads you until you're pliant. And then he assigns you to his sacred fire that you may become sacred bread for God's sacred feast. All these things shall love do unto you that you may know the secrets of your heart and in that knowledge become a fragment of life's heart. But if in your heart you would seek only love's peace and love's pleasure, then it's better for you that you cover your nakedness and pass out of love's threshing floor into the seasonless world where you shall laugh, but not all of your laughter, and weep, but not all of your tears. Love gives not but itself and takes not but from itself. Love possesses not, nor would it be possessed, for love is sufficient unto love. When you love, you should not say, God is in my heart, but rather, I am in the heart of God. And think not you can direct the course of Love, for love, if it finds you worthy, directs your course. Love has no other desire but to fulfill itself. But if you love and must needs have desires, let these be your desires, to melt and be like a running brook that sings its melody to the night, to know the pain of too much tenderness, to be wounded by your own understanding of love, and to bleed willingly and joyfully, to wake at dawn with a winged heart and give thanks for another day of loving to rest at the noon hour and meditate love's ecstasy, to return home at eventide with gratitude, and then to sleep with a prayer for the beloved in your heart and sing a a song of praise upon your lips. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So that is, is, I of course have heard of Khalil Gibran, but I have never heard that. That is not uh, recognizable to me. So, no, no. Yeah, I it heard probably that. should be. What do you That's guys? the only one I know of his, uh, actually. So, <laughs> to me, okay. this is like, this is but, like <laughs> wise love. Like, I have been through it all, and I get it. It's it's past the the teenage, oh, you know, I've broken my heart. But it's like, okay, it, like I get it, you know. It's, it's, I don't know. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> See this to, that to me I, I'm I'm at listening to you and that being a first here for me and having not been familiar with it that's one that I'm going to sit down with and I need to look yes. at it on paper I need to yes. look at every word and absorb that you know I I, I want to hear it again I want to read it again you know because uh, there 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 was a lot of a depth to that, you know, you saying that this is kind of mature love. I, there, there was yeah. a lot to that. I, I need to hear that several times. <laughs> yes, as my first thought, because it's the first time I'm hearing it, was I need to hear it again. Um, I want to visually see it and sit with it. Because there, it, it was a there were excuse me a couple of lines that were like, wait, let me catch that again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, he talks about the pain of it. And, you know, people think of love as like, oh, I'm just going to be so happy when I'm in love. But it takes everything out of you, everything that you've got. It will, when people say my heart is broken, your heart does break. But it's like a Grinch break when it breaks open and and expands to become even bigger. At least I think it can. If you let it break and then it just, you know, you never pick up the pieces again, it's not going to do that. But... I mean, it's like he's saying, okay, this is the way that it is. Do it and do it knowing that it's going to do this to you. Go all the way. Have the whole experience. It is scary. 
<laughs> but that's that's full love. That's that's yes. full real love. Yeah, I mean, people think they'll have the happily ever after. I don't think there is happily ever after is all the junk you go through to get there. Right, right, right. But and that's yeah, not and happy. That's what makes it, but that's what makes it happily ever after. So even if, like, I mean, I quote a lot of rappers, but, like, 50 Cent, when he said, joy wouldn't feel so good if it wasn't for pain, it's sometimes the light at the end of the tunnel that makes right. it that much sweeter. But you have to go through the tunnel. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, he I'm, says, I'm going to need you to send us that text. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah. Gonna he be, says, that's going to be reading, rereading, several times tonight. So, can you have yeah. the the full love experience without some of the pain? Right. I don't think you can. I don't think. I don't think and I think, can. you know, these these like Casanova lovers who just want the thrill of the hunt and the chase and the conquer. You miss out on the best part. You gotta That's stick right. around and have all this stuff. Have your heart broken. <laughs> well, and to that, to that, I mean, I think there are obviously phases of love. So, Sharika, well, sure, you're saying, sure. you're saying, you know, can you have the the real thing without without the pain? It, uh, obviously, initially. You know, initially right. that that yeah. that butterfly yeah. that that that's a that's a different phase of love. But yeah, there's yeah. definitely there 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 are growth cycles and there's you know the ups and the downs and the so yeah, I like that you said, <clears throat> you know this is this is mature, you know this is I've been through that. This is you right. know this is this is not first first six months. This is not first two right, years. Right. This is this is mature. You know, full cycle. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this is. We've been around the block a few times. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he says to bleed willingly and joyfully. Right. Yeah. You're yeah. not doing that at, at first blush. <laughs> not no. at all. <laughs> no. Well, I like that. I want to hear that again. I want to read that on paper. Yeah. Yeah. This is, my, this is this is this this is what uh, got me turned on to him. And he said, yeah. you know, when love beckons to you, follow him. I think, yeah. you know, if you don't surrender to that, and some people are so afraid, then you, I mean, it's going to hurt. It's gonna, life hurts. It's part of it. <laughs> but it, you, you can't really live without it. Not really. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's real because there are things that you haven't really lived until you've loved. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's a full experience. It's just not the happy stuff. That reminds me of, um, and I have it right here in front of me, but I cannot find it. I have about 30 pages dog tagged, and I can't, can't find which of the 30 it is, but that reminds me of some Rumi. Um, where, and I'm going to jack this all up, but it, it says um, those, something like, those who do not run toward the allure of love lives on a road where nothing grows, or something like that. It's very close to that. But that kind of reminds me of that idea. I totally agree. Yeah. Mm. A lot totally of the Ruby. Yeah, I wish I could find it. But I can't find it in my book. Okay, so segue. Can we talk about that stage of hating? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. does anybody have a poem for that? <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. I ha- I have it right here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So this is so so. Sharika's poem is. Oh, I love you. You're all of that. We're so so in love. You know all this. And this one is the hate, and then Laura, your 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 poem comes after they've gone for a circle and they're back together. <laughs> so this okay. is the middle step. This is the middle step where they're hating. Okay. God. This is this is Rupert Brooke, um, and it's called jealousy. When I see you, 
who were so wise and cool, gazing with silly sickness on that fool you've given your love to, your adoring hands, touches so intimately that each understands, I know, most hidden things. And when I know your holiest dreams yield to the stupid bow of his red lips and that empty grace of those strong legs and arms, that rosy face has beaten your heart to such a flame of love that you have given him every touch and move, wrinkle and secret of you all your life. Oh, then I know I'm waiting, lover, wife, for the great time when love is at its close and all its fruits to watch the thickening nose and sweaty neck and dulling face and eye that are yours and you most surely till you die. Day after day, you'll sit with him and note the grassier tie, the greasier tie, the dingy wrinkling coat as prettiness turns to pomp and strength to fat and love, love, love. The habit. And after that, when all that's fine in man is at an end, and you that love young life and clean must tend a foul, sick, fumbling, dribbling body and old when his rare lips hang flabby and can't hold slobber and you're enduring that worst thing. Senility's queasy, furtive lovemaking and searching those dear eyes for human meeting propping that bald and helpless head and cleaning the scraps that life's flung by and love's forgotten, then you'll be tired and passion dead and rotten, and he'll be dirty, dirty, oh, live and free and light foot that the poor heart cries to see. That's how I'll see you, your man and you. But you, oh, when that time comes, you'll be dirty too. <laughs> <laughs> That's rough. <laughs> <laughs> then they get back together. <laughs> that's that's wow. part of the hardest thing. <laughs> wow. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's pain. That's pain there. That's pain. That's pain. She is hurt. Mm hmm. This that was written in like nineteen fifteen, something like that. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah, I that's... think I think it's timeless though. <laughs> it's timeless. It's timeless. It could have been written any time. <laughs> right. In any culture, by male or female. Everybody knows how that is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then he takes her back. <laughs> That's part of the experience. <laughs> Woo! That's rough. <laughs> well, it's funny because I didn't know what order we were going in. And, of course, you know, we're talking about love poetry and Valentine's Day. And his other... Let if 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 you will let me read this other one, uh, written by him, um, that is a complete opposite. This is when they're first in love. <laughs> so who is the author? Rupert Brooke. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this and when and you know when I say this is when they're first in love, I have no idea. I'm just saying this sounds like before before they got to that part that I just read. <laughs> Right. Okay. Uh -huh. Here, here is the opposite. Same poet, and this is this sounds very uh, classic and and romantic. This is just called song. Oh, love, they said, is king of kings, and triumph is his crown. Earth fades in flame before his wings, and sun and moon bow down. But that I knew would never do, and heaven is all too high. So whenever I met a queen, I said, I will not catch her eye. Oh, love, they said, and love, they said, the gift of love is this, a crown of thorns about thy head and vinegar to the kiss. But tragedy is not for me, and I'm content to be gay. So whenever I spied a tragic lady, I went another way. And so I never feared to see you wander down the street or come across the fields to me on ordinary feet. For what they never told me of and what I never knew is that all the time, my love, love would merely be you. Mm, totally that different. <laughs> totally different. <laughs> different rhyme scheme. Night and day. 
Yeah, sing, very sing-songy, um, very traditional, very, you know, rhyme scheme, um, you know, like an ABAB rhyme scheme versus a, you know, how the other one, you can't see it on the page, but, you know, totally uneven. But, yeah, <laughs> same author, different different kind of love, different <laughs> different experience. Well, but, but I think that that anger is is more erratic and it's not yes. sing songy. Yeah. So it makes sense. Yes. Good good point. <laughs> so far we're not v- very uh Valentine friendly. The one that I wanted to open with is very. You guys got me on that. Laura, you got me on the on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Sharika, you got another one. An uh, in, in love poem. Whatever. Oh, any. Whatever. Any. Now I do have one that is similar. Um, one of the things that I do think about is like when you're in that phase where it's not fun um, and it's rough is like the nostalgia of what it was and what it used to be like that butterfly phase sometimes keeps Mm -hmm. you in it and sometimes maybe even keeps you in it longer than you should be Um, Mm -hmm. and so I have a piece called Be the Same where it speaks to that nostalgia of like will we ever get back Um, Mm. so it's not in love, but it's on that 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 line of like, how do we get back to to that initial feeling? But anyways, it says we're sitting across the table, eyes glued to our phones, as though we have nothing to say to each other. The food arrives, we bow our heads and say separate graces. Then we don't even pray with each other, trying to figure out if it's less loneliness or complacency that makes us stay with each other. Because we sure as hell ain't making love. We barely touch when we lay with each other. And we're not even trying to change. No, we'd rather place blame, go tit for tat, and argue over who hurt who first or whose indiscretions is worse, who did the dirtiest dirt. When the truth is, both of our egos are bruised and we just keep pouring salt into open wounds, wondering why we're still hurting. Trying to put bandages over injuries that require stitches, then wondering why it's not working. And we don't even talk no more. Just yell over top of each other, throwing jabs, insults, and low blows, going toe to toe, verbally boxing each other. It's pitiful. And it's not that we've run out of words because we spew all types of spiteful nouns and verbs. Our vocabularies are plentiful. The reality is it's the respect in the situation as minimal. The condition of our relationship is critical in need of intensive care, but will it ever be the same or is it damaged beyond repair? Do you even care? All of our conversations have become rhetorical questioning. Frustration is growing. Patience is lessening. I wish I could read your thoughts since we can't seem to talk. We're stuck. We're in limbo. This is deeper than deciding to stay or walk away. It's not that simple. This is a battle between my heart's desires and my common sense. But what happens when the cure to your problems is the same thing that's making you sick? When the thing that's driving you crazy is the thing that once kept you sane? What happens when too much has happened? Too much drama, too much trauma, too much mess, too much stress and pain. Will it ever be the same? We've been there. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yep. That's 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 yeah. That's that phase. That's that phase before the the full circle. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, that's leave me before the full circle. Before be, before the getting back, will we ever get back ah. to that? So, yeah. <laughs> that's that's that middle phase. Hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, there's a there's another phase after that. So, can you talk um, about the inspiration for that? The, the not, not not specific. I, I'm I'm sorry. I'm not trying to invade your privacy, but but I mean, I well, yeah. Is is that is that is that too too probing a question? <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Um, okay. Like I said. Writing and poetry is tapping into those emotions, and it um, it actually is a play on Drew Hill. Uh, it's like a '90s song. 
or late 90s, early 2000s, um, where there's a line in, in the course, we don't even talk no more. We run out of words to say, tell me how it slips away. Will it ever be the same? And yeah. so that was like, I was actually listening to that as, like, while going through a relationship, like that rough patch in a relationship where it's like, so many like unspoken expectations that aren't being met because they haven't been communicated. Um, and it was just noticing just you get into a complacent phase sometimes. Like I think complacency is definitely a piece of love where you just get comfortable in the same effort you put in in the beginning and the excitement and the newness, it kind of wanes. Um, and it just creates a domino effect of problems. Mm. And so writing about that. Like we just noticing little things like, we sit at first date, right? You go out and it's like all attention, phones away, conversation, um, even second date. So the early stage and like wondering what happened to that. Like when do we get to a space where now we're sitting at the table and we're both on our phones? Um, like we, as though we have nothing to say to each other. The food arrives, mm-hmm. so I had to say separate braces. We don't even pray with each other. So paying attention to like, though the relationship has grown and evolved, it's almost a regret because of like, the complacency. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think that's uh, love needs to be tended. It's like anything that's that's alive. You have to tend yeah. it. Very well said. You don't tend it. It dies. <laughs> Definitely. It show does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can 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 we get back to love and Valentine's, <laughs> and Valentine's Day and celebrating those butterflies? That's <laughs> it. Do you have one for that? I've got one. Okay. Okay. This one is Recuerdo by Edna St. Vincent Millay. This, this to me, feels like that very first, you know, that very, very first spark of love. <clears throat> we were very tired. We were very merry. We had gone back and forth all night on the ferry. It was bare and bright and smelled like a stable, but we looked into a fire. We leaned across the table. We lay on top of a hill underneath the moon, and the whistles kept blowing, and the dawn came soon. We were very tired. We were very merry. We had gone back and forth all night on the ferry. You ate an apple, and I ate a pear. From a dozen of each we had bought somewhere. And the sky went wan, and the wind came cold, and the sun rose dripping, a bucket full of gold. We were very tired. We were very merry. We had gone back and forth all night on the ferry. We hailed, good morrow, mother, to a shawl-covered head, and bought a morning paper, which neither of us read. And she wept, God bless you, for the apples and pears. And we gave her all our money but our subway fares. <laughs> that's puppy love. <laughs> that's, that's puppy love. Isn't that sweet? Oh, that's, that, that's it is very sweet. Day. I mean, it's like... It's very sweet. It's like, that's that's what you remember, you know. That was that. This feels like a first date, you know. They didn't yeah. want to go home. They didn't want to part, so they just stayed on the ferry all night and went back and forth instead of leaving <laughs> each other. And of course, they had to eat, so they got some pears and some apples from somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> you know? And, and then, you know, and it, you know, I love the the sensory the sensory. Uh, uh, that's uh, that's still all the imagery that's still you know that that's in here you know when you think of when I think of well first of all recuerdo means memory um, so this mm-hmm. is like you know re- remembering this this moment you know this sweet moment and um, you know when when you hear a you hear a song or you taste the flavor or you smell a scent. You know that that reminds you of somebody or something or an event that you know that you experience, and I, you know that the pears and the and the and the wind and the sun and the you know all those those that all that imagery you know kind of puts you there on that ferry with them, you know, 
Right. And it's, you know, it's so sweet. I just think this is so sweet. I feel like it, it, it's, it's making me remember pure. some stuff when I was right. in that phase. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I think young love is the most pure. It's, it's unjaded. It's, you haven't really had enough experience with love for it to be tainted. The pure yeah. Valentine's Day, I just Absolutely. want that high school love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The purest, absolutely, yeah. This is before either one of them messed up. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I have another one in that in that uh, vein, and it's it's kind of a. Uh, it's not even there yet. It's it's like. Ooh, forbidden, forbidden. So this is okay. a um, unknown Filipino author, and it's called "If It's Just You." If only you were a star, and I was a moon, always with you. I could woo you in the deep night, and no one would ridicule us. And behind the clouds, you'd be mine. That's sweet. That is sweet. Mm. <laughs> it is sweet, but it's kind of sad. It's like. You know, I mean, I feel for these people. It's like, could you not even talk to each other? What's wrong? Why can't you be together? Why can't you be out the open? You know? Yeah, yeah. More more questions than answers. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's kind of like there's something really intriguing about being in love before you even know who you're in love with. Because you don't, you don't even know each other enough to know if you're in love. But you got all yeah. these feelings and all this stuff going on inside, and it's just like, oh, you know. That, now that, yeah, now that is some some definite puppy love, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's how this, this poem strikes me. Yeah. I mean, even the idea of you'd be mine. I mean, that's not something that I would say. I don't want, I don't want you to be mine. Be yourself. <laughs> Be yours. <laughs> and see, that happens after a couple of things that love. Right. Right. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think when it's new, you want you want to be putting it all consumed. Um but after you've done that a time or two, you're just like, Oh, I don't think I want that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's that's a good point. Yeah, as 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 you experience things and uh, it, love love does love changes the second, third, fourth, fifth time. Mm-hmm. It's not that that those phases definitely yeah. change. Yeah, yeah, and that's if you're always different. doing the the first one. Then you never get to know the rest. Yes, yes, mm. yes. So I think fairy tales kind of do us a disservice because they never get oh, past yeah. the first one. And they all in the same, and that's just not the reality of love. Right. Mm-hmm. Like you said, the happily ever after, but they don't mention the... Wishing for nostalgia, the frustration, the hate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the baby's crying in the middle of the night, no sleep. <laughs> well, that, I think that in itself, that in itself is, is, well, I just, now I feel like I've, the the thought in my head didn't materialize right. I was I was going to say that's what makes us that's what makes us mature, or 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 not mature. Mature is not the word I'm thinking. Or um, well, mature in some in some ways, mature in a wiser and um. In a, in in a non in a non naive way. Yeah. Whatever. Yes. Whatever the opposite of that is. <laughs> yeah. So, which is kind of kind of sad, but at the same time, that's that's growth. And yeah. Every mm-hmm. life, life changes. Life is constantly changing. Mm-hmm. You know, there. You know, 
without change and growth and you know newness, that's that's what life is. It's always changing. Mhm. So is that then also what love is? Is love is essential to life? Is love also about that newness and evolution and ever ever changing? I think so. Yeah, I think there's facets. I think it has facets. Because like in the in the poem that I read, the first one, it's definitely facets. I mean, he tells you, it's going to rip you apart, you know? But it'll give back as much as it has taken. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's like gambling. Is the payoff worth the risk? Right. Right. But I think but it's always the risk everybody takes. Who do you know that right. doesn't take that risk? Yeah. Everybody takes that risk, right? I think. Well, most people. Most right. people. Unless you're a sociopath. <laughs> right. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> but even right. even that, so, okay, so I have one from Rumi. Got to have Rumi in, right? Um, and, of course, he's, he's talking about his beloved is, is God. And he said, I, this one doesn't have a title. Um, it says, with love, you don't bargain there. The choice is not yours. Love is a mirror. It reflects only your essence. If you have the courage to look it in the face, I think is that's what you get out of it. That is deep. Yeah. That is deep. Because if you deep. are with a psychopath, you're still going <laughs> to see yourself. Mm. Because it's how do you respond to that? Well, or if you're with somebody who just adores you, how do you respond to that? And the whole idea that you attract what you put out, Very right? True. So yeah, so if yeah. you're if you're with a psychopath, <laughs> <laughs> what energy did you put out? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. the choice is not yours. Love is a mirror; it reflects only your essence. If you have the courage to look it in the face, so I think there's no better teacher than love. I would agree with that for sure. Yeah, that, I mean, not to say you have to stay with people. That was very true. If, mm -hmm. if it is a teacher, you don't your teachers don't follow you throughout your life, right? Right. But I definitely agree that like you learn just as much about yourself in love, mm -hmm. or more about yourself in love than the other person. For sure. Oh, yeah. oh For yeah. Sure. I think if you're blaming the other person, you're missing the point. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah! <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh, this is We've definitely a Everybody... to a holiday I once didn't value. <laughs> mm. I think if you, I think I hate commercialism. I don't like anybody trying to tell me what to do on any day of the year, and I don't like people pushing, oh, you've got to buy this and do this and do that. For me, I think Valentine's Day, and this is kind of a new awareness because I'm a rebel, I guess. Valentine's Day is my day to love myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, because if it's a mirror, then, you know, and not to say that it's, um, I'm trying not to love anybody else, but when do we have the opportunity to love ourselves? Every holiday, there's Mother's Day, which give give props to mom. Father's Day, Veterans Day, all these days, but there's not a love myself day. No, no, it's you know, <laughs> well, birthday, yeah, like yeah, but your birthday is a celebration of your life. Is it really about just loving on you? For me, I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, Valentine's Day is a is a. I mean, I, I do believe in, in, you know, loving your people, but I love my people every day. So yeah. it's it's time to love myself. 
<laughs> oh, I, I, now I absolutely agree that Valentine's Day is not going to it's not going to make me love you, and right. in fact, it's going to make me resent you know having to just because right. some holidays that I got to because I love you every day. So yeah, I no, I agree with that. Now here, so, so what is the purpose of this podcast then? <laughs> <laughs> no, I say podcast, right? No, but 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 um, but this is different. This is this is this is this is our we're putting love out into the world. But right, but you can go through those same cycles with yourself. Like we've all had those moments of frustration with ourselves, where you just. I'm absolutely, and hopefully there have been those moments where you're absolutely in love with you. If you're real enough, you have those moments where it's like, oh, I'm probably not at my best right now. Right. Yeah. So you, yeah. I mean, you can yeah. you can experience those things. I, self love is the first love. That's what I say, because you're not going to be a very good lover until you love yourself. That's true. Because if you're looking for, you know, fill me up, give me this, give me that, I'll be happy when I have you, then, then, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yep. <laughs> yep. You can't have a two, a complete relationship with two half people. Right. You have to no. be a Yep. I've said that Bring your whole self. Like, you don't even love you. How can I? Yeah. Yep. And I think that that for somebody who has the eyes to see that is very obvious pretty quickly, and it's an uphill battle. So that's my contribution to Valentine's Day. <laughs> Not very romantic. <laughs> it could be love you first. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Embrace all the phases of the journey that is love. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But and the happily but, ever but, after yeah. comes at the end of the tunnel, but you have to also appreciate the tunnel because it's part of the process. Exactly. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Because I don't think you, I don't think you get to the the loving yourself until you've gone through all that. Right. Yes. You don't. Yes. You're not born loving yourself. I don't think. Are you? <laughs> you, don't, you don't start, you know, do, you don't start, you know, loving yourself, you know, and, 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 you know, I, I don't think anybody starts off with that knowledge or that, that, that way of being. I don't think. I can see that. Sometimes you don't know what you like until you realize what you don't like. Like, I know this didn't feel good. And so you learn to, like, love yourself sometimes in the ways that you, by loving others or experiencing the the process that is love, you learn to love yourself more. Well, and two, if you, if, if your relationship is bad and you get bad down in there with it and you're able to see all of your sides and still love yourself, then then I think that was a journey worthwhile. Mm. I mean, because it's easy to say that about somebody else. And, and Sharika, your poem actually said that. You know, I love everything about you. But when do we ever say that? See, I'm back to me again. <laughs> when do we ever say that <laughs> about ourselves? You know, I, I say it to myself. <laughs> 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 well, it's good. Because it's so easy to to not do that. Yeah, that's real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all the time we have for this week. Thanks, Lisa and Sharika. Um, I'd love to hear everybody else's comments. Animism is relational, so don't keep your thoughts to yourself. Bring them out into the world. Um, we get so many comments and questions, but most of them are on the download. So come on, you guys. I want to, um, if you want to share your poetry, do that in the comments. We actually have a poetry contest coming up. We have a, um, this is actually not, not supposed to be announced yet, so you're getting a preview. But we're having a contest. Um, the theme is love poetry and through the elements. So um, if you want to submit something, the, the winner gets published. 
So this, it's all of the elements, earth, air, fire, water, and spirit. So check that on our Facebook or MeWe pages. That's just going to be coming up soon. Um, and if you want to support, you can send our donations online from our website at pansociety.net. Thank you again, Lisa and Sharika, and see you all next week, and thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You're Thank you. Welcome. That was Is fun. there anything, anything you wanted to delete? Nah. I'm cool with okay. whatever. I didn't think so do. either. <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, it'll be up on Wednesday. Oh, that awesome. was that's a quick yeah, yeah. So I'll send it to Lisa, and then Lisa can share it with you, Sharika. Okay, cool. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was fun. Yes, it was. <laughs> All righty. See you all later. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.